Hi, welcome to another Hotel Tales What's Your Story chat series. Most hotels adopt a rather established set of tools, business processes, and expertise to support the effective room revenue optimization. Today on the topic of revenue management, we speak to Jessica Tam, an independent revenue management consultant who has close to 20 years of experience in the hospitality industry as a revenue manager and distribution specialist. Prior to going independent, Jessica was head of revenue with a Brajaya group of hotels and resorts spanning across seven countries. She was tasked to introduce and set up the revenue management and distribution culture and best practices across all the hotels in the group. Her focus areas includes pricing strategy, distribution channel management, inventory and rate management best practices, revenue management technology implementation, and delivery of centralized revenue management services to the group's portfolio of hotels. She also takes care of contracting and negotiation of marketing campaigns with third-party online partners. Jessica is a graduate in hospitality management with Sunway University College and holds two certificates from Cornell University School of Hotel Administration majoring in hotel revenue management and hospitality marketing. Let's chat with Jessica and find out what's her story. Stay tuned. Hi, welcome to another Hotel Tales What's Your Story chat series. We have with us today Jessica Tam, an uh, independent consultant for hotel revenue uh, management. Jessica, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks, Anli. Thanks for this uh, opportunity to you know be part of your talk session. Yeah. Jessica, let's start with your definition of revenue management. And tell us why is this function so important to the hotels? Well, I think uh, in terms of revenue management, uh, it's it's very much talking about optimizing the demands for the hotel so that you get uh, maximum revenue. Uh, because the hotel has different room categories. And you know, when it comes to selling rooms, whatever rooms that is not sold yesterday, you cannot resell it today. Once the room night is gone, it's gone. So um, that's the main goal of it. So what a lot of the professionals or hoteliers are talking about is basically selling the various type of hotel rooms to the right customer yeah, for the right timing because there's different seasonality. There's a low and peak demands for the hotel for the different pricing level yeah, for the right price and in combination of that, the length of stay of the guests together with the different channels of distribution. So all this is what the, the goals of the hotel to actually maximize the revenues in, in uh, the accommodation sector. Yeah, you're so right. I mean, there's so many variables and as far as uh, management of room inventory is concerned. But Jessica, rarely do I see revenue manager's role being extended to cover F&B outlets and also meeting spaces. Why is this so? Um, you're quite right, Henley, actually. Um, because traditionally in the hotel side, it all started in the room uh, division. That's because rooms are the main product in the hotel services. Yeah, that's the main revenue stream. So when it comes to F&B and the function space, it's very much like a complementary or a supporting uh, revenue division. So traditionally, a lot of the revenue managers would come from uh, the rooms reservation side. It's very much concentrated on uh, managing the rooms revenue. So, but you can see actually nowadays there's more and more focus into other revenue stream, especially F and B, uh, especially in terms of catering, function spaces, because um, there are hotels that is actually um, how do I put it that focuses also a lot on meetings and events. Yeah, especially hotels with big function space that becomes a secondary revenue stream. Yeah, but whilst the room side is still a primary, uh, it's a primary revenue stream for hotels. Uh. So that's why the, the focus has always been there. 
Yeah, but I'm sure this trend is slowly, slowly changing. Yeah, where revenue's mm-hmm. role is really also to incorporate uh, the other revenue streams of the hotel. So let's talk about mm-hmm. a little bit about revenue management versus profit management because we use this term revenue management ever so often, and uh, and I realize there is now an emerging approach towards uh, total revenue performance or TRP instead of just purely revenue management. And I think rightfully so, because managing profitability is actually ultimately the goal of each organization. So is profit management left to the hotel, of, uh, GM of the hotel to manage while the revenue manager focuses on just purely driving revenue? Is this a correct statement? Um, no, actually, um, at the very beginning, revenue management has always focused on the top line. But uh, as we actually go on, uh, there's actually more and more talks about looking at total revenue. As what we have mentioned earlier on, it's not just focusing on the rooms. It's also look at your function space, your F&B, your spa, some of the resorts with golf. So you, you, it gradually actually expanded to total revenue management. And eventually people start, started to talk about, hey, if I bring in a piece of business or a group, uh, you know that's coming in um, am I actually earning money for it yeah that's when the profit uh, management or profit optimization start coming into the line then the conversation started talking about you know how um, OTA seems to be such a big part of the business today and then the hotel start questioning hey I'm paying so much in terms of commission you know at the end of the day what is my profit so uh, it's not to say that uh, you know revenue managers don't look at optimizing the profit for the hotel. It's just that their primary focus is still on managing the top line. But the conversation does come around um, in meetings with the GM, with the financial controller, especially because that's where um, the expenses of the hotel is being managed. Yeah. So. Um, if you talk about whether it's important, yes, it is. That conversation is getting louder in in in, in the revenue management areas. Yeah, I think that's so, a very good explanation, uh, Jessica. No, I I think that that's really uh, good. Yeah, and uh, I yeah. wanted to ask you, uh, uh, since you're in this revenue management uh, discipline, what education, mm-hmm. what education and training support? is needed to ensure that the revenue team can successfully manage the hotel revenue stream? Um, Actually, revenue management for me, it's a multidisciplinary area. So there is no one training, I would say, that you can actually go to and then you can just become a revenue manager or, or a revenue director. Um, I always tell this to, you know, some of my previous bosses and some of my my colleagues that I work with, I said, revenue managers are not trained. They are actually mentored. They are actually coached. Because you actually go through um, many disciplines. You not only have to understand a little bit about the the operations of the hotel, you need to understand the financials, you need to understand some marketing, you need to understand how your sales works. Yeah? So, um... It, it's, it, there's no shortcut to it. Lah. There's no shortcut to it. You yeah. need to actually be exposed to different, different uh, um, training and uh, disciplines. And the other part of it, people often think that revenue managers, you just need to be good with reports, Excel, you know, you're always dealing with statistics. The other very, very important part is your leadership skills and your communication skills. Because you will need to actually have a lot of conversation with various departments yeah that's you probably be leading quite a lot of brainstorming session as well yeah to to actually see how you can uh, build more revenue streams or optimize your existing hotel revenue streams yeah that, that is so true i think leadership is a very important key you know uh, for a yeah. revenue manager as well yeah mm. uh, but jessica i often see in many mm-hmm. hotels where reservations mm. manager were naturally promoted to become revenue manager and uh, 
And yet, I believe there's a huge difference between the scope of, of reservations and revenue. What's your opinion on this? Um, well, you can have revenue managers that come from reservations background. I mean, myself, I actually came from that. But does not necessarily mean that you can make every single reservations manager a, a director of revenue or revenue manager because the skill sets and the understandings uh, is, is totally different. You need to have uh, an analytical understanding. You, you need to have an analytical approach to a lot of things. Uh, the commercial sense because you're essentially dealing with the various market segments in the hotel, the business segments. And you're setting strategies together with the various department heads. Uh, you need to have an understanding of marketing. Yeah, how your uh, rates and promotions and all that get distributed out. You need to actually have an understanding of the financials, like what we mentioned earlier on. A, a knowledge of when you actually put out a, a package offer, for example, what is the profitability? What is the expenses involved? So it's very different from reservations. Reservations is very much on uh, operations based. You are a lot of time dealing with uh, customer service. I would say mm. you are selling the rooms. Yeah. yeah, but without all that strategies behind it, why do you sell a rate at such? Why do you sell a promotion at such? Or who is your target market? So it's too. I feel that very strongly it's two different areas. They should should not be automatically a upgrade from a reservations manager to a, a revenue director or revenue manager. Yeah, I totally agree with you. So on, yeah. on that, yeah. So is revenue more a function of reservations or function of sales? What do you what do you think? Because this is a very grey area, I think that a lot of hotels are very confused on the role and the functions of uh, revenue. Yeah, I think this is this has been an H O conversation uh, for many many years. Mm -hmm. um, personally, for me, I find that actually revenue management is more of a culture. Yeah, it, it's it's actually a culture to be ingrained not only in sales, not only in reservations, but even in other areas of the hotel. Yeah, it, it's it's very much um, getting that culture uh, to think how to actually optimize your current demands and make money to make the the optimum money for the hotel. So, if you say whether it should be ingrained in should it be part of reservation? Should it be part of sales? I would say no. It, it's actually both. It's a culture. Yeah. It, it needs to go in as a culture, not as a department. Yeah. I think that's, that's a very good. That's a very good explanation, uh, Jessica. I mean, it's, it mm. is a culture. It is a habit. Uh, it mm. is a practice yeah. that this should be uh, practiced by all uh, de departments and not only res reservations or sales. You know, before revenue. Correct came into the picture, there's always been a huge debate whether reservations, should it be part of sales or should it be part of front office, right? Because uh, many hotels have always parked reservations with front office, but truly reservations is a sales function. Do you agree with that statement? Yeah, reservations, I would say it is a sales function because their primary role is basically selling rooms. That That's what they are. It's just that they are not out there walking the streets like their sales managers. They're just um, in-house. That that's about it. They're still taking calls. They're still attending to you know your customer inquiries that is coming through emails, coming through phones on your website. So they they it should actually be a sales function. Yeah. So they, they capture they capture the sales demand. Yeah, so for a, lot of, for a lot of listeners out there, so if your hotels is still <laughs> parking your reservations under front office, <laughs> I think you got to think a little bit about uh, how you want to restructure this. Now, Jessica, yeah. I know there's always a grey line in the revenue function, right? But tell us, mm -hmm. what is your ideal revenue department setup? Okay, do you prefer establishing sales processes into your revenue management team? Or you expand your revenue management practices into the sales team, which would your preference be? 
Um, my preference. I like to integrate both ways because it's mainly about communication. It cannot be just one way. It's it's not trying to get your your revenue person to understand how sales work. Neither is it trying to get just your salesperson to understand what is the revenue uh, manager's role. Because revenue, it's it's been an H O topic because a lot of people do not know where to put us. To them, we are like an alien. <laughs> Yeah, because we we actually get our hands into so many different um, areas and and disciplines. So there there is ultimately also a fear. Um, like when I first started off in this line, uh, the most common one that I always encounter is um, the head of sales uh, being very fearful that I'm about to take over their position <laughs> because I come in and you know we start talking about. Uh, what price they should sell, or you know, how do we actually put strategies in place to target a certain market? But it 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 it's not that. It, it's actually not that. It's just that because um, our work deals with a lot of reports and statistics, yes. so naturally we do have those information at hand. And our job is very much just going in and. Uh, um, Acting like an extended pair of eyes, or additional, giving some additional thoughts, uh, suggestions into the whole uh, structure. But at the uh, you know, on the other hand, um, I also can't when when I deal with this, I also can't just take it as in uh, that's how revenue works. I don't try to understand the sales part of it. Yeah, I also have to understand that in terms of. Uh, Salesperson going out, you know the clients that they actually looking for. You know, it's not easy to look for clients. You can't look for new clients every day. So you've got to talk a little bit about what's the value of that client to the hotel. So if you ask me, how do you integrate these two? It is two ways. You've got to bring the sales into the revenue, and you've got to bring the revenue into sales. <laughs> <laughs> I see it, it. I see it that way. But right. definitely, at the beginning, it's always uh, it, there's always a a little bit of a tip because they try to understand each other's function and they're very afraid. You know, how do I approach this? How do I have I stepped over? You know, my boundaries. Um, that's not the case. You you just need to integrate these two together. That's both good. ways. That's, that's yeah, that's good. how I see it. Yeah. yeah. So Jessica, tell us uh, what mm-hmm. tools or technology and systems are required, you know, in order to support a revenue team. You know, there are so many, uh, so much technology out there, right? So many systems out there. But uh, for mm-hmm. a hotel who has not really got into the revenue culture, what do you suggest would be a good tool or good system for them to uh, start this culture? Mm, well, for a hotel, okay, Mister Excel is is not the only one that you actually need to use. Yeah, that that that's besides the point. There there are more um, tools out there, new technologies out there to actually help uh, the workload, because it's no longer possible for you to manage everything um, just on Excel alone for your reports or you know. With the management of the rates and inventory going through all your systems, you can't just log in one by one of the OTA sites to mm-hmm. input those data anymore. So I think for a very basic, you need at least a channel manager. That is the platform to for you to manage all your OTA rates and inventory on on one area. Um, probably a rate shopping tool. To help you monitor the rates out there, because it's it's impossible for you to look at all your different concepts, all the different uh, rates that they are selling on the various channels. So these are the two things that you know you would do as a basic. I would say a, a small setup hotel, and um, the next phase is of course introducing a sort of revenue optimization system. And um, there are some out there, uh, higher end, low end. It all depends on your hotel. So these are at least the basic thing. 
uh, and of course the the bigger hotels are now actually embarking even further. They're looking at um, business intelligence tools to help them with their um, analysis and their statistics. Yeah, which some of this system even uh, try to introduce an AI technology, so to speak, because they are always dealing with different pickup patterns. You know, uh, things like that. But the basics should at least still have your channel manager, your rate shopping tool. That that's the least that you need uh, for a small size hotel. Mm-hmm. Good. Thank Thank you very much for that uh, little tip. Yeah. How do you, uh, Jessica, uh, conduct a revenue meeting in in a typical meeting? What mm-hmm. What is required? How do you conduct one? Um. Typically, uh. What I do with most hotel, because now um, I do help manage some hotels, some independent hotels as well. Typically, what I do is uh, I would have at least once a week uh, revenue meeting or forecast meeting, however you you call it. But I prefer to call it as a revenue strategy meeting because in this meeting you talk about uh, your existing. How's your forecast looking? What are the strategies for you to to meet your budget or your forecast and things like that? So normally, in a typical revenue uh, meeting, you would have the GM sitting in. Yeah, the revenue person is of course chairing the meeting. That that will be like the host of the meeting. Then of course you would have your um, director of sales and marketing. Your reservations manager is in there so that they can tell you what's been happening to um, the bookings that's coming in. Your front office managers, uh, it would be good to have them as well because they're dealing with the walk-ins. And you know, one of the things uh, you can actually talk about is upselling as well at the front office when the guest is actually here. And um, of course, you would likelihood have your director of uh, F&B in. Because you're not just talking about rooms revenue, you're also talking about uh, moving into a total revenue, where especially hotels that has uh, few outlets, few F and B outlets, and a and a big uh, event space, probably your uh, catering director will be in as well. Yeah, these are the the main uh, or key person in the meeting. So, but what do we talk about in the meeting? Um, very basic. We will always go through your current month and two or three months out, uh, in terms of your forecast, what you ha- what business you're holding at the moment. So, which are the opportunity dates? Do we have any very peak dates because there's an events or you know there's a low date? If there's a low date, what do we do? What are the strategies that we can put in place? Do I tell sales that I need more? Group to come in during this period, you know, at a at a lower rate. So the whole conversation actually revolves around that, and you you're constantly talking about revenue, talking about uh, how to achieve your forecast. What am I looking at? Uh, those those are the conversations that that usually takes place. And normally, I would do this. Um, I would I would actually recommend to have this meeting early in the morning. When every when everyone is fresh, you know, you, your 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 brain is fresh because you're yeah yeah talking about numbers, you're talking about strategies here, mm. and I would keep it to under an hour because once you hit one hour mark, then you know your focus and your attention would just go away. So just have a slight, just set apart, you know, that day every every week, and then have that meeting. It helps you to focus and tell the team, look, okay, this is our situation. This is what we're going to do. And then the following week, we just come back to the table and says, okay, we have done this. This is the situation now. So you're constantly monitoring your the performance of the hotel. That's that's what we actually do for the meeting. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Jessica. I think you have given us a lot of insights about the uh, revenue management. We have been speaking to Jessica Tham. Uh, she is the independent uh, consultant for revenue management, and you are watching uh, Hotel Tales. What's your chat uh, series? Thank you, Jessica, for coming to the show. Thank you. Thanks, Henley. Thank Bye. you. Bye.